Hey everybody, welcome to video 4-1B. We're going to continue with our discussion of vertical angles and talk about how we use them to find missing angle measures in situations where we have intersecting lines. Um, in example one here, we have two cross braces that are helping to kind of support this deck and the posts and keep them upright. Um, so what we want to do is find the measure of the angles that we're being asked for. So they walk you through this. The first one is um, angle 6. All we need to know is angle 6. Um, and because we just proved in the last video that vertical angles are congruent, that's just a very simple, if the one above it is 146, then so is angle 6. So that's pretty simple. Part B asks us for 5 and 7. It's a little more involved, but not as, as difficult as you might think. Um, from part A, if we know that the measure of angle 6 is 146, and because 5 and 6 here form a linear pair, so let's fill that in with linear pair, and this comes from the proof, remember, um, then they're supplementary, and so the measure of angle 5 is just going to be the subtraction of 146 from 180, or that is going to be 34 degrees. So the measure of angle 5 is equal to the 34 degrees. Now the measure of angle 7 is equal to the measure of angle 5 because angle 7 also forms a linear pair with angle 6 just on the other side there um, or because it is also a vertical angle vertical angle with um, angle 5. So really just find the one that's opposite, that's equal, and then the others are going to be a supplementary relationship or a very quick subtraction from our magic number 180. So next you guys, I'm going to have you go and just do a couple of quick your turns here. Your turns 6 and 7 are assigned for you. Um, the measures of two vertical angles are 58 and 3x plus 4. Find the value of x. In this case, you may need to use some algebra instead of just subtraction, um, but I would recommend that you draw a diagram before you set up your equation. Just like we did with the angle addition postulate earlier in um, the unit 1 um, or with our segment addition postulate, it always helped to do a quick sketch of a diagram before you start making up the equation. So take a pause on the video and do those two problems now. Okay, the next um, section of our video, 41B here, is explain two, and I'm on page 167 in case you've lost track. And we're going to be talking about how we use supplementary and complementary angles to reason through diagrams that have a bunch of intersecting lines. So in example two, um, just remember our definitions here for complementary are that complementary are angles whose measures have a sum of 90 and supplementary are angles who have a sum of 180. And if you ever uh, lose track of that, remember complementary and supplementary in alphabetical order and then 90 and 180 in numerical order and those are the pairings of the words with the numbers. Okay, that's just a quick little way to remember that. Um, so in example two, what we need to do here is in this diagram that they've given us, which notice we have line BE intersecting line AD, and we have another ray coming out at their intersection point F, which is creating a 90 degree angle here and a 50 degree angle on the other side, and that's our given information. And what we're being asked to do is to find the measures of AFC and AFB. I'm going to zoom in on this picture a little bit. AFC is going to be AFC is that angle right there. Hopefully you can see because line AD has AFC and CFD forming a linear pair, um, then they are supplementary angles and one of them is already 90. So that means that this whole side AFC is also 90 degrees. So we've got that as 90. And then now we want AFB, and AFB, tra tracing that out, AFB is here. Well, if we know this whole thing, AFC is 90, 
Then with our angle addition postulate, we've got this small part plus this small part equals the big angle, and we know the big angle is 90. So that's just going to be 90 minus the 50 that we already have, or 40 degrees. Okay, so it might have looked a, like a little complicated diagram to begin with, um, but it's really not. Okay, um, then in part B, we're being asked to find with the same diagram, find the measures of DFE and AFE. So what we know is that BFA, BFA, and DFE, so that's this angle here and this angle here, are formed by two intersecting lines. And those angles are opposite each other, so they are our new definition in this section, vertical angles. So the angles are congruent. We've proved that a couple of different ways, flowchart, and we've used some numbers to prove it in the exact, or excuse me, in the explain one here. Um, so if the angles are congruent, and we just found that AFB back here, remember, was 40 degrees, then guess what DFE is? It's also 40 degrees. So now because BFA and AFE, BFA and AFE form a linear pair, because here's our straight line BE, the angles are supplementary. And that means the sum of their measures, remember C goes with 90, S goes with 180. And so AFE is just 180 minus what we already know BFA is, which is 180 minus 40, or 140 degrees. So again, we get 40 and 140. All right, so the next thing I want you to do on page 168, you guys, is just take a pause. Now. You have two your turns that are being assigned to you, nine and 10. And read carefully through the instructions here. It says you can represent the measures of an angle and its complement as an unknown x. And then its complement would be whatever 90 minus that x is. And then similarly, you can represent the measures of an angle and its supplement as, here's my unknown x, and then its supplement is 180 minus x. You're going to use those expressions to, again, um, set up an equation and find the measures of the angles that are described. So that's what we're doing here on page 168 at the top, your turns 9 and 10. Make sure you solve these before you move on to videos for 4-2.